So you're not looking to play at Nationals. You're not looking to top at Nationals. You're looking to win the entire thing. Now, I have to tell you, to win Nationals, not only do you have to play at your most optimal at every given time, you also have to have a little bit of oomph inside of your deck, inside of you, to be able to win that event. Let me tell you guys a little story. I remember when I was an aspiring rapper back in the ninth grade, I looked up to this guy. He was the best rapper in my eyes. And while he wasn't necessarily famous in the city, in high school, he was the man. I remember for this talent show, one of my teachers actually, actually suggested that we work together. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. He's actually pretty cool. So you guys should already know. I'm like, wow, he even knows me. Like, this is freaking insane. So we spent a couple of weeks getting a song together. And I should actually just mention that this is the very first time that I've ever been on a stage. I'm going to be in front of hundreds of people and I'm expected to perform this verse better than normal because I'm not one of those guys at that time that just outwardly express myself in front of people. So he's like, chill man i've done this hundreds of times before it's easy just don't choke so the talent day, the talent day talent show comes about and our verse or our song is coming up we spit the chorus first and then he completely just blanks out on his verse he's the one that's choking and leaving me on the stage to spit a 16 so i can keep us in this talent show so i pick up the mic I don't know why I dropped my mic, but I pick up his mic and I start freestyling and I'm like, man, all I have to do is get through 16 bars and we can get to my part of the song and we're good. Unfortunately for me, my 16 had a lot of curse words and the talent show or the people that were doing the talent show decided that, nah, this is not what we're going to do. And that is just one of the plenty instances that I was asked to not only perform my best but to perform a little bit above than what I was expected. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to complete that, but I think you guys can at this national level event. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a little bit of oomph, some strategies or some cards that you might want to play or try out before you submit that deck list in. And of course, these are going to be saucy. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys wanna see more videos like this, they're gonna destroy. That subscribe button, but more importantly, go at that notification bell because, well, we just too strong. Also, want to give a special thanks to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would not be possible. And also, a mad shout out to our newest Patreons, Zachary Mitchell Barsotti, Jordan Perta. Keegan and Maximiliano, Dana, welcome to the clan. Make sure you add yourself to that Discord as well as message the Cali Effect truly so I can get you into the Discord or so I can get you into the top dogs so you can take advantage of all your rewards. Without further ado, I present to you the secret text that could possibly win you a national event. Okay guys, so these secret texts may not work for every single player. One thing that I strongly want to urge is that you test these guys out. Test these cards out extensively and see exactly how it would work in your particular deck before making a decision. The very first card I want to talk to you guys about is Ghost Sister in Spooky Dogwood. I think this card is actually a lot better than what players give it credit. Every time your opponent spells summons, you gain life points and then immediately I start to see why players don't necessarily want to play it. Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood adds a resource that people tend to overlook. Life points don't really matter until you lose them all, unless you go into time. During those later portions of the game, you can activate Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood to force your opponent to do two things. Special Summon, continue to Special Summon a plethora of monsters to the side of the field and give you enough life points to be able to fulfill the, fulfill the cost of your cards and still be able to have more life points to them or stop immediately and leave with a broken board. I think that Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood is a lot better than people think, especially in the later portions of a game. The next card on this list is a card that I feel you guys should buy before it skyrockets in price as well. Because one way or another, this card will be a meta competitive card or a competitive card in the meta. 
Trap Eater is a card that can be special summoned to your side of the field by sending one face-up trap card your opponent controls to the graveyard. One will wonder, Cali Effect, what trap card am I supposed to be worried about? Well, there can be only one is a really powerful card that most anti-meta decks play because it ruins all of the tier 1 decks and some of those rogue options that you guys could be using. Trap Eater not only gives you a free 1900 monster to your side of the field, it's also a tuner for those synchro heavy decks, but at worst case scenario, could be used for link material. Next, we have actually a trifecta of cards that can be proven to be very useful depending on your situation. Mataya and the Time Lord not only rids every single monster on the field, all of the Time Lord monsters I'm about to mention cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, and you take no battle damage. So worst case scenario, you can summon them to your side of the field and try to buy resources. Matayan also inflicts damage to your opponent. Next is Sandy in the Time Lord, which can get rid of any specific threat, whether it is a face-up card that your opponent controls on their front row or back row. And then lastly is Safi in the Time Lord, being able to rid all of your opponent's back row cards once it attacks, and it can give you a free draw. The Time Lord cards are really good depending on the certain situation and can get rid of some of your opponent's most problematic threats. Droll and Lockbird has lost a lot of popularity over the past year because of Salomon Great. The deck doesn't need to search whatsoever, but looking past Salomon Great, Droll and Lockbird actually has many uses. Against decks like Thunder Dragon, well, they tend to play a Danger Engine, which allows them to go through their cards relatively fast and add cards from their deck to their hand. Against decks like True Draco, well, it is a complete game changer for them because they won't be able to use their cards like Card of Demise or their True Draco spell cards to allow them to recur resources. Droll and Logbird has so many uses and can be regulated to the sideboard because it can prevent your opponent from advancing against game state. I wouldn't sleep on this level 1 card because it has more applications than just the cards that I mentioned. Most decks search quite a few times to get into their combo pieces. System of a Down is my favorite band of all time. But we're talking about System Down here, which almost does the exact same thing. Down with the System can banish every machine monster on the field and graveyard, which can be very problematic for decks like Orcus, but even good for rogue matchups like Cyber Dragon. It can pretty much prevent them from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! or put them in a situation where they have to make moves to circumvent System Down. I think that a lot of players don't play it because it is specific to the Orcust matchup, but when you consider that so many strategies play Orcust and that Dengirsu in the graveyard can be a reason why you lose or win a game, System Down can actually be problematic for those decks. Electric Virus is another monster or another card that you guys can play that can be seen as pretty specific to certain matchups but has proven itself to be extremely good. Being able to take in the Danger Thunder Dragon matchup your opponent's dragon monster that they summon with Argapane, more often than not that Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, can prove to be very useful. Having a free negate as well as a monster to link off with can be very useful, but in the Orcust Mirror match, you can take your opponent's monsters like Galtea and then start using it for link shenanigans of your own. Electric Virus is a really powerful card, and those are just two instances where this card can really mess with your opponent. The fact that it is a mind control from the hand, meaning that it isn't subject to the same negations or requirements as mind control or crackdown, can prove itself to be very useful against certain matchups. The last card I want to talk to you guys about is for players using a Guard Dragon Engine. Crystal Wing over Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Now this card can be seen as the counter to Electric Virus, which can be counterproductive than suggesting Electric Virus. But here, here's my reason. We're in a Yu-Gi-Oh state where negating things are nice, but negating and destroying is even better. And Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon provides that option. While you do lose out in being able to negate your opponent's spell or trap cards, you gain a very powerful monster that can win any battle against a level monster and can negate hand traps. A lot of times, hand traps can be the bane of your existence. So Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon can prove itself to be very useful. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really did, consider joining our Patreon. We have some awesome rewards. Please like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.